in this talk. I am Manrique from the Inditex Oxpo. I don't know how many of you know about Inditex at some point. Okay, so I, I will explain a little bit what we do and why we are here. I, I don't know how many of you know Sara. You know that, right? <laughs> okay, Inditex is the company that owns Sara and among other things in related with fashion and retail. And our business is a f almost 50 years old company, started by one person in the north coast of Spain, Coruña, Galicia, north uh, west coast of Spain. Almost 50 years ago, one person, now we are 175,000 employees around the globe, all dedicated to fashion. The IT area is around thousands of people, 1,000, something like that. So our business, what drives the company is nothing related with technology at all. So when you're talking about the goals, the impact we are doing with open source, it's a little bit hard to explain to that. So basically when I'm talking with managers, it's, oh, this open source thing, how is it gonna help me to sell more t-shirts? Okay, think about the challenge you, you might be facing. I don't know what kind of industries you're coming from, but it's very different from an OSPO in an IT company. So this is Inditex. We are a family of brands that let people express themselves through fashion and be free to do that. We have different brands, Zara, Pull&Bear, Massimo Dutti, Bershka, Stradivarius, Oisho, Zara Home, and Lefties. So now more or less you have an idea of what's Inditex. And inside Inditex, in the headquarters, there's an area related with technology. That's Inditex Tech. Uh, this end-to-end -end solution is taking care of end-to-end -end everything from designing clothes, product designing, getting the garments, cotton, distribution, putting into the fashion, sorry, in the, in the factory, producing the clothes, putting them in the stores, putting them at uh, customer homes. Everything is end-to-end -end designed and manufactured by Inditex and the technology behind that. So in the, the technology is a mean to, to achieve our business goals. So when we're talking about technology, our vision, our mission we have is usually focus on creating emotions with main, in image, design, and, and technology. That's, that's us as technology group of the company. And the values, the thing that drives us is related with integration. We need to integrate with providers, technology, people in the company. One of the core values of the company, and this is where we're starting to have a discourse for, for open source and collabor is collaboration. We need to collaborate with our providers. We have a lot of partners working inside with us in our own teams. Our teams, uh, our development teams is not only people employee by Inditex, but different partners. So we have teams that are different partners with different interests by the, themselves, plus our people. Usability is something that we have in mind. We have being designing technology for people that is not used to be using technology. E-commerce, but also our commercial people in the company and stuff like that. Mobile in the sense of not about uh, talking about only mobile devices, but people that is around the world with very different connections. We have people working in Turkey, in Vietnam, in Japan, in the States, in Spain, of course. So very different connectivity issues and problems that you might have. Intelligence, okay, this is not 100% related with AI, that is the topic lately in every conference, but intelligence for all the data you might collect about the usage, about the connections and our, everything, how we can take advantage of all that data and produce value. And of course, real time. And real time, I, I don't know, I'm not going to enter into very deep, deep details about the company, how we produce things, but imagine that Every 15 days, there is a new collection in the store, in the physical store. So every 15 days is like our <laughs> deadline for everything. Every 15 days, there's something new to be produced. So that translates in the culture of the company from design to technology. Because usually it's people from Pool and Beer need a new feature in their application because in one month, we are going to have this. And it's like, okay, the platform teams start to cry. No, the platform is something that we strong, stable, that we cannot be that fast. We need to be that fast. So everyone in the company is thinking about delivery, delivery, delivery value. And when you're thinking about, okay, I need to contribute to open source projects. I don't have time for that. So 
again, and you are measured by the value you produce in terms of, of fashion and, and retail. So a lot of challenge there. Some fats, as I said, eight brands, more than 200 markets worldwide, more than 5,000 store, physical stores that have been used as, as hub for also distribution to and, uh, customers. More than 6,000 millions, 6 billions in American people <laughs> visits to the web, uh, to the Zara web uh, uh, per year. More than 16 e-commerce apps. You think that we have eight brands. Each brand has a mobile application for Android, for Apple, and then the website. So everything connected. Uh, the stack, the tech stack need to be end-to-end from just designing the product, connecting to the cloud, to having an end user application. And we have uh, set up in the last three years, five internal communities. I'm gonna enter into detail later about this, to just people that, okay, there are people in logistics working with data. There are people in e-commerce working with data. There are people in distribution working with data. Why not putting all these people together? Because sometimes they have similar challenges. So let's create some communities around that. So that's what we have now, product design community, open source community, data community, analytics community, and cloud community. Those are the communities that we have set up internally. So one of the topics or the focus I, I would like to talk in this conference, this talk is about, okay, when people ask me, okay, how Inditex ended up setting up uh, an OSPO? Why this is important, of course, a lot of technology, open source makes sense, but what's the value of having an OXPO there? Because sometimes it's, if enterprises would be mature enough, OXPO wouldn't be needed. <laughs> Everything would work perfect and we would be all open and collaborating, but okay, it's not a perfect world. Uh, so I started thinking, okay, one of the values of the, of the company, of the corporation, if you think about fashion, uh, market or fashion industry. Well, we are well known because we are not that friendly with the environment. So sustainability for environment is, is critical for us. Everything we, we develop in terms of managing products, cotton, water, energy, is always measured in terms of what is the sustainability of the things we are doing. So I start thinking, okay, what, can we translate that into software at some point? and can be open source, the key to get that sustainability mindset in the company. So I start to think about, okay, if we think about a company and all the technologies that are related with the company, that's what I call the technical ecosystem of the company. I mean, if you are working mostly with data, all the data technologies you are using is your ecosystem. The, whatever you contribute to that ecosystem is gonna be beneficial to you. Whatever you consume for that ecosystem it's up it's to you to build your business. When you are a big company, your ecosystem is so huge. You are talking about data, you are talking about IoT for physical storages, you are talking about intelligence, artificial intelligence, whatever, yeah, applications, all this stuff. So if we start thinking about, okay, if we have this ecosystem, now what's the limited resource of that ecosystem? Because we are taking things for build, uh, to build our solutions. So I start wondering, and there have been a lot of discussions, if you want to contribute to the discussion, if we are thinking about the limited resource in this tech ecosystem, the first thing that many people think is about money. If you put money in the ecosystem, you put money in open source projects, everything is gonna be better. If you put money on the developers, the development is gonna be faster. And there are some studies that they say that probably it's not always the solution. And some of the, mon the solutions that are, have been put in place, like tips and things like that, I don't know if they are helping your brand washing or already uh, helping to the development of the project itself. The second thing that could be, okay, that makes sense, is time. If you put time in the projects, you help people, you put your people helping on these projects by time, this means everything is gonna be better. That makes sense. It could be related with money. I can buy time with money, probably. But at the end, it's probably um, about people. You need to have people in the ecosystem working 
together to build whatever. Internally, externally, at the end, it's, it's about people. And lastly, I've been thinking a step beyond. It's not only people, it's the knowledge that people has to build things. When you are consuming software, you are consuming the knowledge of someone that wrote, wrote something some time ago. You are consuming that knowledge. So I start to think about knowledge. And of course, in an ecosystem, you are not only alone. You are competing with others or collaborating with others. See, if the ecosystem is healthy, probably we are going to be friends at some point. If not, we are going to compete and it's going to be hard. I do a lot of photos of bears. I have a lot of photos of bears. Bears, I think, is in, in English. Because our open source office in English, open source office is also. That's bear in Spanish. <laughs> That's the Spanish you know, bear for our logo, right? So if we think about it's, everything is about people and we start thinking about software, these people, these teams are building something. Packages. These packages usually are consumed by others, by the same team, by other teams in the company. At some point, if you reach certain level of maturity using these packages, you are able to contribute back. You are able to put your people contributing back to these packages. Even at some point, you probably are building your own packages and you can release those packages in a certain way that could be reused by the rest of the community, of, of the people in, in this ecosystem. And for me, this is the, the cycle of recycling knowledge in an ecosystem. If we maintain these cycles running, and this is my perspective of what's the goal of, of Inditex Open Source Office, is to maintain these cycles running. And to do that, the only way I see that we can achieve that is through the idea of community. Because teams are focused on delivery value. The company is focused on their business. But when you're thinking about, OK, we are not working along on this. We are collaborating internally. We are building the sense of belonging, the sense of we are working together in a certain technology. It's the sense of a community. And for me, there are two key drivers to force these communities. One internal, and the other one is inter external. The internal one is inner source. Thanks, this is a concept that is known more known by the people. How many of you doesn't know anything about inner source? Feel free. Okay. If you know about open source, clearly everybody collaborates, everything is transparent, open to collaboration. That's in the open, in the worldwide world outside GitHub. If you are thinking about thousands of developers doing the same thing internally, the internal the walls of your company, that's inner source. Allowing others to know, okay, what we, this thing that is two days beyond me, if you are working in the headquarters, or that thing that I see in the dev developer portal that we have, what is this about? And sometimes you are not allowed to do this, you need to ask for permission to see this repository. Does that make sense in a company? In some cases, it might make sense because, I don't know, you are ready with defense or something like that, very secret. But OK, we are a retail fashion company. We don't have that secret technology that is going to disrupt the market at some point. So why not sharing all together what we have? And with the same idea of open source, in the sense of probably I don't have time. Don't expect that many people contributing to their project. But at some point, allow people to contribute. That's the first thing, by allowing people to contribute. It's not a, a, the, the goal. That's the one thing that I usually say to managers when they start talking about open source. So we are going to get a community, and they're going to contribute to our projects. No. What? Come on, Manrique. You are telling me about open source, the Brian's community, people collaborating. Yes, but no. Go to GitHub. Look at the number of projects that are there. Building a community is not, is not something that you put something there and whoa, the people appear. If that happens, OK, <laughs> congratulations. But it's not a typical case, right? So you need to work in many other things. So why not doing that internally first? Learn about what people usually look at your projects, what is missing in your documentation, that processes and stuff like that. And internally, you are protected by NDAs, by security, by all the stuff that you can share with your colleagues even if they are from partners. So that's the way we are promoting inner source in the company. And that's one of the roles of the OSPO. This is how we start. 
Ah, uh, ok, The Bear, otra vez, The Bear. <laughs> That's our logo. So basically, with this scope of consumption, contribution, and leadership, we have worked for the last three years in three main areas, and we have some announcements to make today. First of all, knowledge. Talking with people about what open source is, what is collaboration, what does it mean. The last year, I spent the whole summer talking with, let's say, 50 years old fashion company with people in lawyer and legal, quite focused on industrial property, uh, IP and stuff like that, thinking, okay, we, we want to do open source. And what does it mean? Now we are going to publish our source code publicly. No. <laughs> okay, let, let's start again. We are in an open mindset. We want to do this. This is okay for opening to contributions. Okay, but the software is going to be mine and I'm going to let anyone to touch it. Uh, then it's not open source. So what are you proposing? Who defines open source? Well, we have the open source initiative. Okay, where is all the open source store? No, no, it's not, it's not a store anywhere. It's, it's distributed. It's people collaborating. Uh, one of the jokes that uh, I remember was talking about car manufacturers. Uh, Wolfgang is here and was invited at an internal event. Collaborating to, con to build something. And he was like, no, no, no. I can imagine Mercedes working with BMW to build something together. It's built together and it's using both cars. But you don't see it because the value is in another place. It's like in fashion. Again, technology is a mean to get more t-shirts at some point in the customer. They are going to see t-shirts, not the technology you are using. So why not building all, all together with the market? A lot, of, a lot of knowledge, a point that people can ask about license. Uh, it's open source. Come on, I can go there and GitHub, clone, it's in my desktop, I can use it, it's for free. It's a license, it has a license. It must have a type of license, a license approved by the open source initiative. And certain license comes with certain restrictions. Not because you cannot use it, but you need to deal with, I need to publish the code, uh, or I don't need to do that, I need to name the project at some point, and people was like, Oh, but I think open source is all the same, but not exactly the same. Then we started uh, working on frameworks, frameworks about how you can contribute to projects. And one of the typical jokes was, no, no, I, I am using my Gmail account to contribute to open source projects because I don't want any issue with the company. And I say, how the company knows that you are contributing on your behalf or on the behalf of the company? And that, from the legal perspective, it's interesting because if, you, if anyone from outside the company cannot guess, they can say, okay, these people working for this company is doing this for a project that maybe is not interesting for the company, for the brand at some point. Or I think this is a case that was rising in Germany. People uh, were said to, you can contribute to open source projects, but you need to do that using your uh, personal account. So that means you are using your personal time and resources to do something for the company. Those are what we call in Spain extra hours. So you need to be paid for that. And, I say, and then the company say, okay, you must be using your, person, your corporate account under our infrastructure, no worries, you are allowed to do that. So it's, it's not that, that at some point. So we have framework for contribution, for reusing software, and for uh, publishing open source software. And last but not least, we have developed, or we need to integrate some tools for analyzing licenses. Of course, we already have tools to analyze all our dependencies. Again, it's, it's the, the, also, the open source office is three years old, but the company has been doing technology for a long time, so vulnerabilities matter. And there was a tool there running to analyze all the dependencies. The good thing for us is that it also includes information about licenses, so we can report to our developers about that. But this is the, the portal we have developed about documentation for them. So they can see, okay, what's, what's open source, what's not open source, what kind of projects they can install. We have some mandatory things, we have some tools presented, we have our policies in terms of licensing that you are more or less allowed to use, depending on the context. Because people didn't realize that it's not the same if you are distributing something for a network service or you're distributing a binary 
or you are just distributing the source code of the of the application. That means different implications. And in terms of frameworks, we have frameworks for consumption, contributing, and leadership. That I call leadership in the terms of publishing our own open source projects. And this is the other thing that I think is quite important to be understood by anyone working in an OSPO. I don't know if any, any of you are working, in, who of you are working on an OSPO, first of all? Okay. How many of you, your OSPO team, no, no, keep the rice, the hand rice. How many of you, your team is more than 10 people? <laughs> Only one. <laughs> Congratulations, Wolf. I don't know. We need to talk more about how we achieve that. I said we are in the level of thousands of IT people, and we are just two, three people. We are now part of the engineering team, so we are getting a lot of help for platform engineering team in our case. But one of the hardest things for an OSPO is to get traction in the company, to get friends to, okay, we are on this together. I know that your goal is to deliver value on other things, but this is important. It's a long-term thing. As I said, we have been doing this for three years, and this year we have released our first open source projects in GitHub. It, it took months to decide what's the name of the GitHub repository. Something that for me as a developer, as free open source people from all, person from all time, was like, I will call that in this test tech. No, no, this needs to be approved by certain level of managing and then for marketing and communication and everything. Okay, in three months, probably I have the repo uh, ready to be deployed. So we need to talk with people in security about consumption. We need to talk with people with com about compliance. Okay, you have already some compliance thing put in place. Please could add, you add the ones ready with open source. If we are thinking, uh, talking about contribution, the same thing with people in legal communication. That for me was something like, you need to talk with the uh, communication people in the company. And I said, but the, the ones that are taking care of, I don't know, the manager of the company is giving a talk somewhere. Yes, because the, the name of the company is going to uh, appear publicly in, a, in, in certain ways. And we need to know, that, to, to know that because there are tools that are tracking where our name appears and we need to know why. <laughs> to avoid surprises, let's say like that, okay? Because usually a surprise is someone calls, why we are appearing here? And then that person calls to another person, to another person, and the third or fifth person doesn't receive a typical, oh, I want to know why we are appearing here. Said, okay, we don't want that level of stress. It's all control. And from the point of, of level of leadership, the same thing. We are, need policies and frameworks about how we are, which projects are we going to release, what's the pace for that, and what we, we want to in the level of tools, uh, again, well, the first package is because we are the, the developing some integrations to measure the dependencies we have in the level of thousands, in the level of a lot of versions of the, the same dependency, but also related with consumption and uh, legal uh, licensing and, and compliance. And we are integrating with GitHub and, and the other one I, I want to talk later, the open source insights. I don't know if you know that, but I will talk a little bit later. In terms of contribution, it's basically integrating with, with GitHub to have some kind of SLAs in place, some checks that the OSPO need to review the code you are going to contribute and, and the projects. And in terms of leadership, we are integrating a couple of tools that I have found quite interesting. Uh, uh, the one that probably I will mention later, one is reuse software. Uh, if you know, you don't, you don't know reuse software, reuse is a tool that has been developed to tag the license of a project in a, uh, using an spec that makes it reusable. In the sense of machines can read the license in, in a better way, can integrate with SPDX and, and all the stuff related with that. It helps a lot to teams about, I don't need to write again all the headers of the file anymore. It, it helps to automate that part. One that I would like to, to mention is devs.dev. It's a platform developed by, but maintained mainly by Google that provides some insights about projects. Insights in the level of, for a package and a version, it lets you know what is, what is the license and something that I will mention later was the scorecard of that project. The Open Security Foundation, the Open Software Security Foundation has developed a scorecard 
to analyze the health of a project. So basically, that scorecard can be consumed through an API. So basically, you can see, okay, my dependencies, what the health of the dependencies I have. This is something that we have for midterm. Now we are on focus on, on compliance because the tooling that we have internally to check our licenses is not that complete at some point. Okay. Uh, it also allows you to know about uh, vulnerabilities if you, if you want. Uh, the other tool that probably you, you already know about it, if you are already working on a on an OSPO, is the open source review toolkit. Open source review toolkit is an open source project uh, uh, founded in in Europe, I think, from people from here, and then they started to do it as a business, an open source project, and integrated in in several manufacturers that allow to scan, analyze, and report uh, the de dependencies of your project. So you can report and even do the compliance based on your license map that I saw you before. So basically you can say, okay, what's the level of compliance of this tool? And this is something we are using when we are releasing something in open source. We check first with ORT, oh yeah, o -I -O -O -R -T, if it's okay with the licensing what we are deciding. And this is the scorecard. It's a GitHub action that you can configure to your project to analyze, okay, what's the health in terms of maintenance, security, and all the stuff. It's automated and it can be integrated with projects in a certain way. And as I said, um, close to finish, we, we are just starting. And you say, okay, you have been doing this. I remember last year in Bilbao, uh, a colleague of mine said, okay, Manrique, you've been for two, three years in Inditex. And you haven't released anything. I say, yeah, I know. <laughs> it takes time. <laughs> I remember walking, talking with Wolfgang one day. I say, oh, it took me five years <laughs> to arrive to something. I say, okay, I'm not that bad <laughs> in my team. So yes, we are starting three three years. So okay, we are just starting to first of all release our first open source projects. Uh, we release uh, some in January, other ones that are coming now uh, once the summer is end. And by the end of the year, I expect to have two, three more. Uh, uh, release. We have one project related, well, I mean, one of the contributor maintainers is here, <laughs> Mario. It's a, I'm going to try to spread the best, the best I can, okay? It's a tool for GitHub users to map your issues, your pull requests, and your. Well, it's an extension of the GitHub CL, CLI to uh, manage with, the, to synchronize with the workflow you have in your company. In our company, we need to map our branches with the issues that we have created, and these issues could be in Jira, they could be in, in GitHub, so we need to help uh, automate that to you know, go there and, and write again the issue one after the other. So very, I would say very simple tooling, but not that simple, but, right? <laughs> not that simple. But something that we can show to the company, okay, we can do that, and the company is still running, right? <laughs> we are not uh, with legal problems anymore. The other one is about the scoring APIs according to open API recommendations. So if you design an API, open, uh, uh, an API, you can check the quality according to the open API recommendations, what's the quality of the API you have developed. Everything we do is API first. so. This was a tool that we developed by ourselves internally, and it was like, why are we not making it public? Actually, we were, this allowed people to, our people to go to conferences and say, okay, this is how we are doing this. And any contribution we can receive. Now we have also there a couple of forked projects in terms of projects that we have forked from upstream because we need to make contributions. So now our contributors in the company to open source projects, they don't need to do that in their personal accounts. They can use the, in the text tech uh, GitHub repository uh, organization, sorry, to make that for and contribute using the infrastructure the company gives to you to, to do that. And thinking about next challenges, and probably this is always like looking for help in the audience is, okay, how we can get and give visibility to the things we are doing? Because in our case, if this is something that is cultural in the company, we are doing this in a humble way. Yes, this, we are in the text, step by step. It took us 50 years to arrive here. It took th three years to have arrived here in terms of an OSPO. But we want to do the things the best possible. But we are not here to say, okay, we are the best. We are not that people. Okay, we are just humble people. But how we can give visibility to this, to this uh, internally and both externally? 
in a certain way. We are thinking about, okay, let's go to conference, organize internal meetups and meetings to show why it is important, bring people from the community from outside to talk to us internally, okay, this is what is working. So if anyone wanna come, please let me know. The second challenge is consistent engagement. As I said before, the teams, the focus of the teams is about delivering things for the business, for the value of the business. 15 days, new collection. And when you are thinking, okay, the company has Python development framework, Java development framework, Go development framework, Node.js development framework. So, okay, everything is nice for a new developer to come to the company and start coding. But when you are thinking, okay, I want this project to go outside, that means that certain points of the framework maybe cannot be public. So to put something in public, it's like, I need to do more work? 15 days, new collection. I don't have time for that. How to solve that? So now we are moving to everything based on 100% open source infrastructure to lower the barrier to allow this open source thing. Something that I missed Sofia Vargas talk today about open source value, how we can show the open source value for the companies in terms of business, in the mindset of a business person, why we are doing this? The typical job, what we are do going to an open source conference at all? <laughs> What's the value of business value of that? There is already business value and we can discuss later about that. And last but not least, if we are thinking about the limited resource is knowledge. And we are thinking that we have now copilot, pulsar, I don't know, that many amount of AI models that can co code for you is really now the knowledge, the limited resource, or, or is still the limited one. And we need to find a way that AI can survive and work together with us to still produce in open source, to still consume in open source, and be a good open source citizen. Because at the end of the day, is what we want to be is another citizen in the open source ecosystem, be nice as possible with the ecosystem and make the ecosystem flourish. That's us, that's the slice up to here. So if you have any questions, you are more than welcome. If you want to contact me, that's my contact address and more beers to talk. Beers is another thing, I know. <laughs> any question, any comments? I have a mic that works. Nice. Thanks, Manrique. Um, you, you mentioned about the OSPO reviewing contributions. Is that on sort of a, um, a per repository, or is it literally every single upstream pull request is getting reviewed by the OSPO? Mm. Well, I can answer using this mic. Very good question, Tan. When, when I started in the company talking with developers about, okay, are you already contributing to open source projects? It was like, yes, but not telling anyone. Okay, we want that to happen. We want to allow people to know that you are contributing and it's, it's not breaking the company. And it's part of your work and it's, it's good for the company. So the, the rule that we put as an OSPO is, if you are thinking about contributing to an open source project, we need to know. We know that not 100% of the people is calling us. But what I do to incentivize people to call us? What's funny? Someone called me and said, I'm going to contribute to this project. This is DPR. I was checking, yes, the license is OK. I'm not that 100% technical person, but I see, OK, it looks good. We are contributing to a project that is not our competitor <laughs> to make it better. So makes sense. Yes, you can go with your Inditex uh, account. In the next uh, week, when the, it was being approved by the, uh, the project, I go to the team's channels we have for community, and I say, oh, congratulations to Manuel for the first contribution to an open source project. You can imagine the number of people that emailed me, hey, I have contributed to another one. Put me, put me on the list. So we are not measuring everything, but at least let's give visibility and incentivize the people to do that. Because then you can go to the manager and say, okay, we are already contributing. This is the contribution of the company. Because again, when you are talking about big corporations like this, the typical discourse you are using is, well, you have money enough to contribute to open source projects. Why are not giving more? And 
My reply is, yes, probably we can do more, but we are already contributing time with code, time answering and replying to in forums, because sometimes people are asking about a certain technology and people from the company is replying, so that's contribution too. And of course, we are hiring companies with a big bill by the end of the year that those companies are the top contributors of certain open source projects. So that's also contributing to the ecosystem. Of course, we are always open to explore more, but our checklist for contributions is, is that level. It's basically, please call us to let us know. Any other question, Wolfgang? Please make it easy. <laughs> It will be very easy. No, I just wanted to thank you for sharing the story because it's that was really cool. And you know, obviously we've been in touch, and and I followed your story, and I think it's really really cool because it's I mean no small thing what you achieved right over over the last three years, and it's also refreshing or reassuring for me, for example, to see that it seems that every major company is kind of going through the same issues and topics. Yeah, like so. Uh, I remember our first meeting with the legal department went very similar, you know, the, it was, uh, so we got together and the legal people said, okay, so we researched on this open source thing. And so we understand you want to uh, develop software on company money and then give it away for free. Obviously, that's a misunderstanding on our part, but what do you want? You know, said, no, that's exactly what we want. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, no, wait, 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 no, 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 no. And so we explain and so forth and so forth, yeah. Okay, so very. Uh, question? Wait, when, when do we see the Inditex open source manifesto? Ah, very good question, Wolfgang. Uh, GitHub.com slash Inditex tech slash F-O-S-S. That where the manifesto is. Thank you, Wolfgang, for the inspiration for a manifesto. When I talk with the people in the company, why not having a manifesto? It was makes sense. Oh, and this is the Mercedes one. Mercedes has already one. Oh, we need to have one too. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, one of the lessons learned in the legal discussions is any anyone here is le uh, a lawyer? Okay, don't talk with legal. Put a lawyer talking with legal. Yes. What I did is to hire. Uh, a small company in Spain that is focused on legal and open source. There are not that many. Look for them. I give, I put them in a table to talk with our legal team. The moment I realize this is right, where when when both of our, both of them, I mean our legal department and these girls, were talking in Latin, literally. This is a tremendum. I don't know. This is a tremendum. You know, Okay, so that's why we, they don't understand us. They talk Latin, I talk bigs. <laughs> you mean, you, you, for it so you can be so easy that, yes, it's gonna be technology paid by the company for free. Uh, for them, it's, it's quite different. But when you explain in legal terms, they understand, oh, no, makes sense, makes sense. There is a license, there is an IP on place, it's okay. Any more questions? Oh, yes, all. I, I don't know how much time we have. <laughs> Two minutes. Quick. Uh, thank you very much, Marike. Um, so um, you mentioned that uh, the developers were kind of like incentivized and energized by, hey, you didn't mention me and I did a contribution. Um, what other uh, kind of like code adjacent, not specifically code, but maybe design uh, activities, or uh, as you mentioned, answering questions in a forum, uh, what other sort of activities do you have in scope that could be incentivized to include more people that are non-coders into the open source community? That, that's, that's a very, one, very, good, very one good question, yeah. Well, my, my experience, not only in the text, but related with open source uh, development is... Yes, yes, I'm finished. I am one minute. <laughs> uh, is to go specifically from the beginning. The beginning means you start using a technology. You start reading the technology. Then you start implementing the technology. And at a certain level, if you are mature enough with that technology, you are probably, you know, how to reply some questions in the forums. So go there, reply them, help the community on that time. 
Of course, at certain level, if you reach certain maturity, that means the, the technology has achieved a point of, I would say, criticality for the company, you are able to think, I, I think this would be better on this way or that way. Why not talking with my UX people? And why not having this feature or other feature? Propose those features. And if you reach certain level of maturity, I'm not talking about the same person probably, <laughs> but the same thing or the same company, at a certain level, you are going to be able to develop by yourself that, that things. So all that is what we, I call the path to the developer, like the Mandalorian, this is the path. <laughs> it's not that you arrive and you are ready to deploy 1,000 millions, uh, well, sorry, 1,000 1, lines of code to a project. You start by the basics. You need to start by learning, help others to learn. Uh, in, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, make some improvements or suggest improvements and then you are the one making the improvements and if that project is really that project matters really to the company and to you at a certain point if you are reach certain level of improvements you are going to become a maintainer and some companies are investing a lot of money to hire maintainers of projects when they have they could have this path of the, with their own employees from the beginning so incentivize that in the company because you are also saving money, probably not time, but the level of maturity you are reaching is, is more and the community is also is, is more welcome into that kind of integration. I have some experiences with companies that it was like, I'm going to go there and put 1,000 lines of code and say, you are new here. Go away. Start by the beginning. <laughs> not all the companies are that. So I don't know if you have any more questions, but we are run out of time. Thank you very much for, for attending. Thank you much for the for getting here. And write me an email if you want to know more. Thank you. <laughs>